نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم ربی زدنی علما ربی شرح لی صدری یسر لی عمری واخلو لقدتا من لسانی یبکو قولی السلام علیکم دیا سیستیس ویلکم بیک تو آر ویکلی قرآن کلاسیس Today, inshallah, we will be covering Surah Yasin, which is a fantastic surah. We all um, have our times reading it. We all seem to spend a lot of time reading it. We all spend um, a lot of time seeing other people read it. So today we're going to find out exactly what is in this surah and what the surah is all about, inshallah. The Prophet said that there is no permissible envy for um, uh, um except for two people so you are um not to be envious of anyone except two types of people now um the first is a man who allah has given the knowledge of the book to and he recites it during the hours of the night the second it is said it is um, in a second version in another version it says that a man who has been given wisdom by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he acts according to it and he teaches it and a man who has Allah has given wealth to and he spends it in charity during the night and during the day so during the hours of the night and during the hours of the day so remember being able to recite the Quran whether it is in the day or whether it is in the night and then being able to understand it it means that person can implement it in their life so we've all of us we've been muslims for a very long time alhamdulillah but we've never really understood the quran uh, um, the way we do now until we sort of like quite recently um it's a true privilege from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we um strive towards something then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the himmat and the tawfiq to actually get nearer to, to uh, what we are striving. And it's not enough to recite the Quran. It is also important that we follow it and we act upon it. So we'll start with um, what we did last week. Last week, we, um, if you remember, we uh, completed Surah uh, uh, Fatir. And we'll just go quickly through the um, summary points today. And we learnt that the angels are a special creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are special in the sense that they are ginormous, they are beautiful, they are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the angels, they do not have free will. They obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are a very special creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sole provider and the sole creator. So we should be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever we need something, whenever we want something, whenever we feel that things are not going right for us, the only one that we should be turning to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We often find that when people feel that their things aren't going right, instead of talking to Allah, instead of going towards Allah, what they will do, is they will um, complain to every Tom, Dick and Harry. They see every person they see on the street, every person they see in the shop, in the town center, wherever they go, they will see that person and they will start saying, oh, this is what's happened to me. Oh, look, this is what's happened to me. Oh, look. In actual fact, we should be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and putting our grievances to Allah. And then we were told that beware of Shaitan. He wants you to join him in the hellfire. So we see that um, a lot of the time we all say, oh, yeah, yeah, Shaitan, Shaitan, we don't want to be like him. But there's a lot of things in our lifestyle that are very much like the Shaitan. He will um, lure us into things. He will lure us into thinking that we, um, we want to do this. We need this. He'll lure us into thinking our wants are our needs. And do we really need what we um, say, uh, say that we need? And are our wants and our needs exactly the same? Or are our wants and our needs different? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has um, uh, given us what our wants. Uh, we know what our wants are. But we seem to think that our needs are connected with our wants. Our wants can be anything. We Obviously, there's a lot of things that people want. But do they really need them? 
So whatever you want, whatever you need. Um, first and foremost, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we don't just get it because we want to be like shaitan. We want to be frivolous with our money. We want to be wasteful with our money. We don't just get it for those reasons. And when... Um, uh, when uh, the wrong things happen in our life, um, when we go for the wrong things, when we do the wrong things, when we are happy with the wrong things, it means that shaitan's, um, uh, the shaitan's deception is working. So the shaitan is um, working uh, on us. He's thinking, let's get them to do this, let's get them to do that. And we're, um, uh, we're quite happy complying with whatever he is asking us to, or whatever he is asking us to do, whatever deception he is leading us to. So if he is leading us to um, uh, certain things, and we, we will be quite happy to follow those. Honor comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to seek it from people is futile. We can't just think, oh, well, you know, um, our, our honor comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But um, if the people are happy with me, then Allah will be happy with me. It does not always work like that. Honor, true honor comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want honor, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rulings. Follow the Quran. We do things that are, um, uh, you know, sort of like for a worldly purpose and we expect Allah to be happy with us. We do things to please the people and we expect Allah to be happy with us. So that's futile. We need to do things that are going to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. Good deeds and good words, they support each other. So when you speak well, you do good things, then these things are supporting each other. All the good things support each other. Likewise, all the bad things will support each other. Bad words, you know, when you're angry, when you're shouting, it will lead to um, uh, arguments. The arguments will lead to a full-fledged flight, a fight, and the fight will lead to other things. And a good will, word will lead you into, you know, the heart of a person who will be kind towards you, who will want to do things for you. You will want to help them. They will want to help you. You will want peace for them. They will want peace for you. So always do good things because good deeds, they are supported by good words and good words are supported by good deeds. Likewise, evil words are supported by evil deeds and evil deeds are supported by evil words. Plotting evil and revenge, that always fires back because you know um it always backfires we always think that oh i'm going to do this and the other person is going to be um uh, upset it's going to be angry it's going to be <clears throat> it's going to be hard done by or something really terrible is going to happen to this other person not knowing that uh, evil plotting and revenge always backfires and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make sure that it does backfire on you so, so leave people to whatever they are up to don't think <coughs> that you will teach them a lesson. Let karma teach them a lesson. Let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach them a lesson. Don't go plotting revenge. Don't go plotting um, the, the evil. So Allah knows your past, Allah knows your present, and Allah knows your future. So don't think anything is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we often think that we have to, um, um, we're just sort of trying to prove that we've done this and we didn't mean it and we were good about it. and. Our intentions were sincere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows this. So don't go, you know, um, feeling that uh, what you're presenting is what Allah is seeing. Allah knows you. Allah knows your present. Allah knows your past. Allah knows what's going to happen to you in the future. Allah created you. So there's no pretense around who you are. Toxic people are there so we can learn lessons from them and be grateful for the lessons that they have taught us. And sometimes you can't avoid these toxic people. They are there. You can train yourself to see the good in them. You can train yourself to see how can you improve yourself. How can you be a person that's not like them, that is um, different, that is going to be um, good for society. So they, these people are going to be around. We have to live within the community. We have people of all sorts of behavior. But we have to make sure that we don't, our behavior does not become like them. Show your good side to them. See if you can um, get them to um, see good in, in, in the dunya. Because I've met many people who always see the bad in things, always see the bad in things. They, 
but you can actually turn them around. You can actually see, say, to, you know, sort of like keep company with them and teach them what you, alhamdulillah, know. Allah did not create us because he needed us. Allah does not need us. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to test us. So we are in this dunya just for a test. So we're not going to be staying here forever. We're not here to be here forever. Allah created us because we are to be tested. We need Allah, but Allah does not need us. And do not conspire against others. Like we said earlier, you know, don't go plotting, don't go conspiring to, um, against others as well. And again, it usually backfires. And don't be fooled by Allah's respite. Don't be fooled by the time that you have. Don't be fooled by the fact that, oh, at the moment, no one is saying anything to you. At the moment, things are still going well. So maybe what you're doing isn't, um, is not uh, that bad. Know that sometimes people can do things that are absolutely terrible. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them that time, gives them that respite. So they can, like they say, give them more rope so they can hang, hang themselves. So Allah gives these people that time. So we should be aware of the fact that um, whatever um, we are doing, Allah knows. And Allah will pull the ropes soon. Very soon things will catch up with me. So don't be fooled by the respite that you have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let's start our surah for today, which is Surah Yasin. And the main theme of the Surah, uh, of, um, surah Yasin is the hereafter. Those who deny the hereafter and then the reality of the re hereafter and those who also deny the reality of the hereafter. So if they're denying the hereafter, of course they're going to be denying the reality of the hereafter as well. So let's start with Surah Yasin. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, Yasin. These letters are one of the miracles of the Quran and none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone knows their meaning. By the Quran, full of wisdom, truly you are one of the messengers on a straight path. This revelation was sent down by the Almighty, the most merciful, in order that you may warn a people whose forefathers were not warned, so they are heedless. So, the purpose of the Quran is to warn a people, warn the people whose forefathers were not warned, who had not been warned, so therefore they were unaware. Now, in the first incident, uh, in, uh, instance, this is revealed for the people of Mecca, and then, of course, for the user and eyes uh, later on. The Meccans were descendants of Ismail, alayhi salam, who was the son of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. But many, many generations had come and gone and um, uh, come and gone since Ibrahim and Ismail, peace be upon them, had uh, uh, lived in this dunya. The religion was um, forgotten. The religion was diluted. The beliefs had changed. They had, um, you know, played around with everything. And now people worshipped idols. They denied the hereafter. So all the things that Ismail alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam had um, uh, taught the people, taught the um, community, the society, the people, all of those things were no longer in existence. And people no longer believed in those things. So it means that they were not warned and their forefathers who had taught them these things, they were not warned either. So they, they were all heedless and unaware of the purpose of life and the fact that there will be a day of accountability. So the Prophet came to warn them. Ayah number seven. Indeed, the word has pro proved true against most of them, so they will not believe. Verily, we have put on their necks iron collars reaching to the chains, so that their heads are raised up. And we, and we have put a barrier before them, a barrier behind them, and we have covered them up, so, they, so that they cannot see. It is the same to them whether you warn them or warn them not. They will not believe. You can only warn him who follows the reminders and fears the most gracious, unseen. Bear you, um, bear you to such one the, glad, uh, uh, one the glad tidings of forgiveness and a generous reward. So who is this one? It is the believer, the one who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Rahman. He knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and yet he fears him. So he knows Allah's mercy, he knows Allah's generosity, 
but he still fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hassan al-Basri said that the believer does good, yet he is fearful. So he does good, but he's afraid, he's worried. And on the other hand, the sinful person, he does wrong and he is fearless. So he's doing all the things that he's not supposed to be doing. And yet he's got, you know, the heart of a lion and he's thinking, that's it, I can do what I like. So the person who fears Allah in the unseen, meaning even though they are alone, they, you know, there is no one else there. They know that Allah can see them. They know that they, you know, they, uh, even though they're alone, they're still being watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they know that their Lord is your Rahman. They know that they know this and yet they are still fearful. For such a person, there will be forgiveness and a great reward. But verily, we give life to the dead and we record that which they send before them and their traces and all things we have recorded with numbers as a record in a clear book. So what, of, what is the purpose of bringing the dead back to life? The purpose of bringing the dead back to life is so they can be judged, they can be questioned, they can be accounted and they can be compensated for what they did in this dunya. So in this dunya, we have free will, but that free will is um, uh, we can use and we can, do, you know, sort of like make good choices. But at the end of the day, that free will is limited. It does not mean that we can do what we like because we have been given the Quran and that tells us what we can and what we can't do. So we, it means that um, the free will is, uh, is limited and we are going to be accounted for the choices that we make. So with this free will that we have, we make choices and those choices we are going to have to uh, give accountability for. And every single thing is recorded. So the free will that we have, at the time that death approaches us, then there is no more free will. There's no more uh, free will. So now we have the grave, now we have the resurrection, now we have the um, accountability and we have the destination. And there's only two destinations, we have the heaven and the hell. And with the good deeds that it spoke, uh, speaks about, the deeds and their traces, it says that the good deeds are, um, uh, are what you sent, for, uh, sent forward, meaning that they are recorded. So this book is taken, um, uh, uh, taken, to, um, well, taken forward. And in an authentic hadith, we learn that at the time of Fajr and at the time of Asr, we have angels that, in, in simple terms, we have angels that change shifts. So the angels that come at Fajr leave at Asr and the ones that come at Asr, they leave at Fajr. So they go up and they, uh, 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 your deeds are recorded and they take your deeds up. Then we have, um, so at no point during the day are you alone. So not to say that you know, there is a time when your deeds are not recorded. So your deeds are always recorded. At no time will you be left alone. We also learn in another hadith that the, on Monday and Thursday, the deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the good deeds go to a place where the good deeds are preserved, reserved. And in the bad deeds go to a place where the bad deeds are, um, uh, are kept, so to speak. So they are put accordingly into the places that they need to be. Then it speaks about the um, asar, the traces. The traces uh, uh, is basically the effects of those deeds. Like when um, you say something to someone and you make them really, uh, you make them feel bad. They have a really bad day. They suffered all day from that one comment that you made. Um, of course, that's got to be accounted for as well. So the asar that you left, then you know it's not as if nothing is going to happen about that then something is going to happen about that. So there is, Asar is recorded as well. Similarly, when you've done something good for somebody or you've spoken a good word to somebody and they're feeling really good, they're feeling upbeat, they're thinking, oh yeah, I can conquer the world, you know, that they, they're, they're in, their confidence has boosted, has grown. That too is recorded, that you have made somebody feel good, you have made somebody's day. And that effect is also recorded. So the Deeds and their effects, their asas, are also recorded. Imam Bukhari, um, as we know, his deeds, uh, as you know, or we know what he did when he wrote the um, um, Sahih Bukhari, centuries uh, have uh, passed, but we still all learn from those deeds, uh, from those um, uh, 
from the, from the books. That is the asar of his deeds that he wrote the book and we still are learning from that book. We all learn from it. We all, uh, you know, sort of like go back to it. So this is the thing that is benefiting us. Not just one person, not just two people. The entire Muslim Ummah benefits from the works of um, Imam Bukhari. So we should be thinking about um, the deeds that will remain after we have gone as well. Um, most of the time we think about, you know, the property we're going to leave behind, the gold we are going to leave behind, the jewellery we are going to leave behind. But we never think about the asar of the things that we have, which we will leave behind and what they will be. Your children are amongst the asars that you leave behind. So when you leave behind good children who pray, who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they go on to have children who are also Muslim, they pray, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's a good trace of your deeds. Or the other hand, if you leave children who are you know, committing crimes left, right and center, causing people harm, bringing uh, disruption to people's lives, causing people pain and aggro and making people cry, that is also a sar of your of your deeds that you have left behind. Ayah number 13. And put forward to them a similitude, the story of the dwellers of the, dwellers of the town. It is said that the town was Antioch when there came messengers to them. When we sent to them two messengers, they denied them both, so we reinforced them with a third. And they said, Verily, we have been sent to you as messengers. The people of the town said, You are only human beings like ourselves, and the most generous has revealed nothing. You are only telling lies. The messengers said, Our Lord knows that we have been sent as messengers to you, and our duty is only to convey plainly the message. They, the people, said, For us we see an evil omen from you. If you cease not, we will surely stone you, and a painful torment will touch you from us. The messengers said, Your evil omen be with you. Do you call it evil omen because you are admonished? Nay, but, they, but you are a people transgressing all bounds by committing all kinds of great sin and by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, we should not believe in superstitions. As a Muslim, we are not, we don't believe in superstitions, uh, superstitions, because certain individuals, certain things like, um, uh, you know, black cats or walking under the ladder, or there's all sorts of things that we um, that we hear. Or um, in certain cultures, when you sneeze and they say, well, you can't leave the house now because someone sneezes, so you have to stay behind. This is all superstition. So we do not believe in that. And when something bad has happened to us, because we think, oh, we saw so-and-so, something bad's happened to us, or so-and-so has brought bad luck to us, or uh, all sorts of things, no one brings bad luck to you. When there is something that we think has, um, has gone wrong, what we need to do is we need to reflect on our own deeds. What is it that I have done that because of which Allah's mercy has been taken away? So don't go blaming other people or other things about mishaps that have happened in your life or whatever it is it is whatever is meant to happen to you will happen to you so don't go blaming other people don't go being superstitious because a lot of people will be superstitious about a lot of things oh um i can't get married because someone's done bandish on me i can't get married someone's put nazar on me or um or their children or something so there's always people being superstitious about certain things as a muslim we we do not believe in superstition we do not believe that things happen because um, the, because a black cat crossed your path or any uh, anything of, of such a nature. Ayah number 20. And there came to them a man running from the furthest part of the town. He said, O oh, my people, obey the messengers. Obey those who ask you no wage, of, um, no wage and who are rightly guided. So the messengers were denied, all three of them. All three of the messengers were denied. And this man, ordinary man, comes running from the furthest part of the city. So the people around them did not believe, but this person came from a distance and he believed. And he said, oh, people, follow the messengers, believe in them. So he didn't just sort of like come casually thinking, oh, people, you know, let's all believe in them. He came running and he showed his um, enthusiasm. And he, he said, oh, people, believe in them. It is said that his name was Habib and he used to work with ropes. He was a sickly man who suffered from leprosy and he was very charitable. 
giving half of his earnings in charity. And his fitra, his natural inclination, was sound. And this, again, is the sign of truthfulness for the prophets, that they don't expect any worldly returns. Like the man said, that they don't expect anything from you. So the prophets do not expect anything from the people. They... Um, they they come with their own generosity, they come with their own teachings, and they supposed to people are supposed to benefit from that and they are sincere. And the uh, the the prophets or the people that teach, their compensation is not with the people, it's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they do it with good intentions and they do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends your way is more beautiful than anything anyone on this world can give you and why not why should i not worship him alone who has created me and to whom you shall be returned so he is asking them a question he is saying that why is it that i should not worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's saying why, why should we not worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that i so for what reason have i been created what's the why why am i in this dunya so if we really think about it what justification do we have that we are on this dunya why are we here who sent us here and who are we going back to all of it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah sent us here the reason we came here is to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are no excuses that we can come up with that we were busy, we couldn't worship Allah, we had a business, we couldn't worship Allah, we had children, we couldn't worship Allah. We, whatever we have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to us. So we should not make excuses about why we cannot do the ibadah that we are sent to do. Shall I take besides, um, besides him, God's, if, if the most generous intends me any harm, their in intercession will be of no use to me whatsoever, nor can they save me. Then verily I should be in plain error. Verily I have believed in your Lord. So listen to me. It was said to him when the disbelievers killed him, enter paradise. He said, would that my Lord, would that my people knew that my Lord has forgiven me and made me of the honored ones. So when he when he was giving this message to the people and he was saying believe in Allah what the people did is they stoned him and they killed him and then he said that if only they knew because when he was killed he was sent to paradise he was um, uh, sent to heaven and he said if only my people knew so then he, he said oh Allah guide my people for they do not know and he they kept stoning him until he died a violent death what was he doing while they were stoning him he was praying for them he was saying oh allah guide them guide them so when he was told to enter par paradise because of uh, what he had done and uh, how his life had been taken away allah took away his sickness allah took away his grief allah took away his exhaustion from this dunya and he was told to enter paradise mujahid said that it was said to habib and najir enter paradise this is his was his right for he had been killed when he saw the reward i.e the paradise he said what that would that my people knew so he is still thinking about his people katada said that you will never find a believer but he is sincere and he is never insincere so when this man saw with his own eyes how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had honored him he said, would that my people knew. So he is still thinking of his people. You would think that I'm in paradise. Why should I worry about anybody else? But he is still sincere to his people. He's sincere to others. So he is still thinking about these people. So they neither listened, nor did they show him any regard. But Allah honored him for the very statement that he had been killed for. So Allah honored him for the statement that he you know the dunya had killed him for so so he was given a paradise um ibn abbas said about this that because he was sincere towards his people during his life by saying oh uh, people obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obey the messengers and he was sincere in his death because when he died he said oh wish my people would knew, had known about this because he um he he still wanted good for his people even after 
he had he, he had he had died even after they had killed him and if we think about ourselves we normally if somebody says a harsh word towards us we after that we never want to know about them we never want to speak about uh, to them we never want to speak um with them and this person he's had he's had rejection he's been stoned to death and yet he's still thinking oh I wish they knew about this. I wish they knew what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for me. I wish they knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, 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 has forgiven me and Allah has put me in heaven. So he then, of course, if they knew, then they would be encouraged further and they would be put in heaven as well. And there's a similar um, uh, incident with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where um, the Prophet, uh, when he went to give the people of Taif uh, the um, da'wah, and they did not believe and they uh, chased him and uh, got the children to chase the Prophet wasallam, and they stoned him. And when he, uh, the Prophet wasallam, found refuge and he sat down, uh, Angel Jibreel, uh, peace be upon him, came with the Angel of the Mountain. And the, the Angel of the Mountain said that, just order me and I will crush these people in, uh, you know, between these two mountains. And the Prophet wasallam said, no, you know, maybe from these people, there will be people in the future who will be Muslims. And Alhamdulillah, in those cities now, there are people that are Muslims. All people in those cities are Muslims. So when we, um, uh, when we are uh, uh, sort of like um, trying to get people to learn or trying to teach people, just getting angry because they're not learning or they don't want to learn is 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 not really um, helping anybody. It's not helping you and it's not helping them. So always try and be on the middle path. So like keep keep going, keep going, keep telling, keep repeating, and inshallah one day the penny will drop. All right. Um, I think we were on ayah number 28. Yeah, let's do 28. And we sent not against his people after him a host from the heavens, nor was it, in, uh, in the, uh, nor was it needful for us to, uh, to send such a thing. It was but one shout, and lo, they all fell still, dead, silent. Alas for mankind, there never came a messenger to them, but they used to mock him. Do they not see how many gen of a generation we have destroyed before them? Verily, they will not return to them. And surely all, every one of them will be brought before us. And a sign for them is the dead land. We give it life and we bring forth from it grains so that they eat thereof. And we have made therein gardens of date palms and grapes. And we have caused springs of water to gush forth therein so that they may eat of the fruits thereof, and their hands made it not. That will they not then give thanks? Glorified is he who has created all the pairs of, of that which the earth produces, as well as of their, of their own, of their own kind, humans, male and female, and of that which they do not know. So, Subhan Allah, this is such a beautiful thing. It is an amazing thing that people do not recognize, people fail to recognize the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he created everything in pairs. So the male and the female, the night and the day, the dunya and the akhira, the sun and the moon, and everything is in pairs, the plants, the animals, everything around us that we see. There are things that we do not know. There are things that Allah created that we will never know. We will die without seeing these things. We will die without ever knowing these things, it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of them in pairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is unique. He is the one. There is no equal to him. There is no partner and there is no, you know, pair for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone. He is the creator. And as I number 37, and a sign for them is the night. We withdraw there from the day and behold, they are in darkness. And, a sun, uh, and the sun runs on its fixed course for a term appointed. That is the decree of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. And the moon we have measured in, for it mansions till it returns at the old dried carved date stalk. Date stalk. It is not for the sun to overtake the moon, nor does the night outstrip the day. They all float each in an orbit. 
And a sign for them is that we carried their offsprings in the laden ship of Noah, and we created for them of the like thereto on which they ride, and of and if we will we sat oh, we shall drown them, and there will be no shout or helper for them, nor will they be saved unless it be a mercy from us and an enjoyment for a while. So again, if we see there is the ship mentioned here. But it could be anything. It could be your car, it could be a plane, it could be when you go you know, for a walk, it could be um, uh, when you're on a boat ride. So many things can go wrong. Many, many things can go wrong. Things, uh, uh, devastation, you know, things can cause devastation, lives can be lost. So many things can, uh, can happen. But because of Allah's mercy, he causes us to land safely. He causes us to reach the shores. He causes us to land when we go to when we go abroad and we're in a plane. How many times have we heard of plane crashes? How many times do we know of ships are sinking? And yet, when we have made it to the other side, um, um, safe and sound, that is a true blessing from Allah. So we should always be grateful when we have reached our destination, wherever we are going. We have reached our destination, and we are grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Ayah number 45. And when it is said to them, fear for of that which is before you and that which is behind you in order that you may receive mercy. And never came to them a sign of their Lord to them, but they did turn away from it. And when it is said to them, spend of that which Allah has provided you, those who disbelieve say to those who believe, shall we feed those whom if Allah had willed, he himself would have fed? You are only in plain error. So what an excuse this is. You know, they, they're they saying that um, it, it's they're making excuses not to give. So they're saying that if Allah had wanted, then he would have given these people them, himself. Why should we give? But Allah gives to everyone. Allah gives different amounts to every person. The reason he gives some people more is so those people have the opportunity to give to the ones who have less. Now, um, if we have more, then it is Allah's blessing upon us. And if they have less and we tend to give to them, then then that again has Allah's, is, an Allah's, is Allah's blessing upon us. Because if we can't find someone poor to give wealth to, then we lose out on the, um, uh, uh, on the reward, uh, on the ajr that we would get from giving to, to these people. So the reason we have more is because it is um, through that that we earn our reward. So when Allah has given us a surplus money, when Allah has given us more than we need, then our savings, instead of you know putting them away and then never touching them and not knowing what happened to them, because when you pass away, those savings are not going to be yours anymore. They're going to go to, to um, uh, whoever inherits them. Um, so, and then instead of spending those, um, uh, some people just hoard and some spend. So the ones that spend, so you know, on these fancy labels, on these sort of vacations and so on. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you more money than you need, then don't do, you know, don't be extravagant. Don't be wasteful. Of course, travel the world, see, you know, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made. But don't be frivolous with these things. Others have a right in your wealth. As others have a right as to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And coming up with lame excuses like Allah could have given it to them if he had wanted to, but he didn't, so therefore I don't need to give them. That was just one of the things that these people, of uh, these disbelievers did. And of course, as believers, we are told totally different that Allah has given you, and the more you give, the more you will receive. And number 48. And they say, when will the promise be fulfilled if you are truthful? They wait only but, um, uh, but a single shout, which will seize them while they are disputing. So they say, when is the day of judgment? You know, they, 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 people ask about this. But it will come up upon them suddenly. Again, death comes up on people suddenly as well. Sometimes you go to town, you go, you're out and about, and you hear that people have passed away. They've left the house, they've gone somewhere, and they've passed away. They've um, passed away um, in the marketplace, they've gone shopping, they've passed away in, uh, in the local supermarket. 
um, they've passed away while they're arguing with somebody, they've passed away while they're buying, while they're selling, whatever they are doing, they have passed away. And when it comes to, uh, like they said, um, uh, people have passed away while they are arguing with somebody. Nowadays, you don't even have to leave the house to argue with somebody. Nowadays, we can do this on, uh, online. So we can stay at home and do these things. And if it's your time and your life is up, then you have died doing this certain action. And your life is too precious. It's too precious to be wasted with um uh, with arguments with people it's frivolous having arguments with people thinking well i'm going to put them right only allah can put people right so pray for people more than actually trying to put them right i number i number 50 then they will not be able to make bequest nor will they return to their family and the trumpet will be blown, and behold, from their graves they will come out quickly to their Lord. They will say, Woe to us, who has raised us up from our place of sleep? And it will be said to them, This is what the Most Gracious had promised, and the messengers had spoken the truth. So when they say, Woe to us, who has, um, who has um, raised us from our sleep? Meaning, that, uh, um, meaning who has uh, raised us from the graves? which in this dunya they never thought that they will get up from their grave they never thought that they will be a second chance they never thought well a second time of getting up second time that they're going to be given life they never thought that they will come out of their um uh, out of their uh, graves and when they see what they see with their own eyes and this is when they will say woe to us so the dis people that disbelieved they will say woe to us who has raised us from our place of sleep now this does not contradict the fact that they will be punished in their grave because in comparison to what will happen to them afterwards the punishment of the grave will seem like a nap it will seem like a you know just sort of like a uh, play and amusement compared to what will happen on on that day It will be um, it will be but a single seha. So should, uh, behold, they will all be brought up before us. This day, none will be wronged in anything, nor will you be requited anything except that which you used to do. Verily, the dwellers of paradise that day will be busy with their joyful things. So on that day, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us that the people of judgment, uh, people of paradise will have reached their you know uh, arena they will be like yes i'm here now they will settle in the gardens of paradise and they will be too preoccupied to um uh, worry about other people so they'll be too preoccupied with their victory their new life their internal uh, eternal life to worry about anybody else so they will have made it hassan al-basri and ismail uh, bin uh, abi khalid said that they will be too busy to think about the torment which the people of hellfire are suffering so they're going to be in in paradise they're going to be in heaven so they're not going to they're not going to be worried about what's happening to people in the hellfire so the people of paradise will be taken quickly into their blessings and their rewards and remember that some people will be taken into paradise even before the people of hellfire are taken into the hellfire and why are they going to be taken uh, to paradise before that is so they are not disturbed by seeing them because when you see something like that then that is um, that is disturbing so they are taken away before anything uh, uh, anything like that starts happening so we learn in a hadith that jannah will be brought into the view of people and they will see it and they will be told to enter it and if they see Jannah in its full adornment, in its decoration, and Allah will say, where are those servants of mine who fought in my way, who were killed in my way, or who were hurt in my way, and they strove in my way? And Allah will say, where are those servants of mine? They, the, these servants, they will enter Jannah without hisab, without accountability. So, we want to strive to be amongst the people of Jannah, inshallah. So I'll, I'll go through that again. Verily, the dwellers of paradise that day will be busy with joyful things. They and their wives will be 
uh, will be in pleasant shade, reclining on thrones. And they will have therein fruits of all kinds and all that they ask for. So fruits for the Arabs was a delicacy. It was a mark of luxury because it did not grow in the deserts. So the fruit was bought from the outside. They was bought from the north, from the south. It was very, very expensive. So it was um, the food of, um, of, of food, it was luxurious food. And it was rare as well. So people of um, uh, Arab, they did, uh, Arabia at the time, at the time they could not afford these things. So when they mentioned the word fruit, it means something absolutely amazing. Right, um, ayah number 58. It will be said to them, peace be on you, a word from a word from the Lord, most merciful. It will be said, and O oh, you, the criminals, get you apart this day. Did I not command you, O children of Adam, that you could not, you should not worship Shaitan? Verily, he is a plain enemy to you. And that you should worship me alone. That is the straight path. So, when we are in this dunya, we are to oppose the shaitan. We are not to obey him. And shaitan calls for everything which is opposite to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called us to. So the commands of Allah, so the commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, for instance, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, pray, fast, um, give zakat, wear a hijab, things like that. Whereas shaitan says, uh -uh, don't pray, you haven't got time for praying. Um, don't fast, why do you want to stay hungry all day? Um, don't cover, you're so beautiful, why do you want to cover everything up? So it's different things, it's different things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to do, and yet we do the opposite. And when we do the opposite, that is shaitan telling us to do these things. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to keep the ties of kinship. Shaitan is saying, well, why should you, they don't bother with you. You, you know, you're a good person really, but it's just them, they're antagonizing you. So he goes to the opposite of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you to do. Ayah number 62. And indeed he, Shaitan, did lead astray a great multitude of, a multitude of you. Did you not then understand? This is hell which you were promised. Burn therein this day for that you, you for that which you used to do. This day we will seal up their mouths and their hands will speak to us and their legs will bear witness as to what they used to earn. So this is this ayah is very very interesting ayah. It is said that on the day of judgment, they shall the mouths shall be sealed up. So this will be the statement of the uh, disbelievers and the hypocrites on the day of, um, uh, of uh, resurrection. That they will say, they will deny their sins. They will say, we did not do this, we did not do that. They will swear that they did not do these things. They will make excuses for themselves. And also they will say that we don't want anybody else saying what we did. We want to witness against ourselves, ourselves. And then Allah will seal their mouths and Allah will cause their limbs to speak about what they did. Ibn Abi Hatim recorded that Anas bin Malik who said, We were with the Prophet وسلم, and he smiled. He smiled very broadly that his molar teeth could be seen. Then he said, Do you know why I am smiling? We said, Allah and his messengers, the messenger knows best. He said, because of a way a servant will argue with his Lord on the day of resurrection. He will say, O oh Lord, will you not protect me from injustice? So he's sort of like, you know, saying this is um, uh, injustice. Allah will say, of course. He will say that I do not want to accept the testimony of anyone else except myself. Allah will say, fine, today you will be sufficient witness against yourself. Then his mouth will be sealed and it will be said to his faculties, speak, so they will speak of what he did. So um, the legs will tell of where they walked to, who they bared themselves in front of, or, um, or, or, or wherever they went, where they were not meant to go. The eyes will speak of what they saw. They will say, we saw this, we saw that, we were made to see this, we were made to see that. So everything that we see in privacy, on our own, 
the eyes will tell of that they are recording it the um, ears will say what they heard everything that they were they were made to listen to everything they that they heard in their lifetime they will say the hands will speak of what they did what they stole who they slapped who what they wrote what they typed they will speak of everything that they did and these will speak why should they not speak they are made from the same material as your tongue the tongue is a bit of flesh and your body is a bit of flesh so they will speak and allah gave your tongue the power to speak in this dunya and in the hereafter allah will give the power of your limbs to speak on this day so they can uh, they can um, bear witness for you what you did and it will be um, then they will be permitted to speak and he will say the person will say when he is able to speak you know may you be doomed it was for you that i was fighting so he's saying to them you know why have you gone and said all of this it was you i was trying to save from the fire of hell abu musa al-ashari may allah be pleased with him said that i think that the first part of the body to speak will be the right thigh so your right thigh will be the first part of the body that will start giving evidence against you ayah number 66 and if it and if it had been our will we would surely have wiped out blinded their eyes so they would uh, so they would struggle for the path how then would they see and if it had been our will we would have transformed them into animals of life, lifeless objects in their places then they would have been unable to go forward move about nor they could have turned back and he whom we grant long life we re reverse him in creation weakness after strength will they not then understand meaning a person who has a long life a person who has been given a long life by allah subhanahu ta'ala he returns to the state of helplessness the way he was born he was born weak then he grows up and he has full strength so he's like thinking that's it i'm it's me it's my everything is about me then he starts declining and then he goes back to utter weakness so then he becomes dependent on others again and then he becomes you know he goes uh, he becomes utter utterly weak so then allah is asking that do you not understand you know do you not see this around you so when we see a person who is elderly around us we should think that this is me in the future remind yourself that this is what i am heading for and then ask allah subhanahu ta'ala to protect you from it as well and realize at the same time that how you are now how we are this in you know our eyes and our ears and our mouths and our hands and the way we are our strength it's all temporary so we want to use it to do the good in this dunya all these um, faculties Allah has given them, they're not going to last forever. They don't last forever. As we, as you grow older, you know, from your 20s, your 30s are different. From your 30s, your 40s are different. 40s are different. And then from the 40s to 50s and 60s. And then when you, you know, turn 70, 80, you can see, you can see you, yourself declining through the years. Even people who are, nowadays we always think 40s is young. 50s is young but you can still see those people suffering with health ailments you can see their weaknesses you can see that they are on the reverse they are going backwards with their um with their strength and their other faculties i number 69 and we get and we have taught i number 69 and we have taught uh, we have not taught him poetry nor is it suitable for him this is only a reminder and a plain and a plain Quran that he it, or he or it meaning either Muhammad wasalam, or the Quran may give warning to him who is living a healthy minded believer and the word charge may be justified against the disbeliever the person who is dead or who has rejected the warnings so <clears throat> we normally recite Surah Yasin when someone is dying or someone has died <clears throat> a reason being that we think that we are going to transfer the reward of what we are reading Allahu alam whether that actually happens or not there is a difference of opinion in that but this is actually telling us that the Quran has come to warn us 
warn the person who is alive, the living. So the person who is living, the person who has a living heart, the person who is alive, the person who is a believer, the heart that is spiritually alive, this is for them. But the person whose heart is dead or the person whose heart is inattentive or distra distracted, then even if they know the Quran, it will not benefit them. So it is the, the, these, these lessons in here are for the person who is alive and the person who is learning. Um, do they not see that we have created for them of our of, of what our hands have created the cattle so they are so that they are their owners and we have subdued them to them so some of them they have for uh, have for riding and some they eat and they have other benefits from them and they get milk to drink will they uh, will uh, will they not then be grateful and they have taken besides Allah gods, hoping it, that it might be hope, that they might be helped. They cannot help them, but they will be brought forward as a troop against those who worship them. So let not their speech then grieve you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Verily we know what they conceal and what they reveal. Does not man see that we have created him from Nutfa? Yet behold, he stands as an open opponent that man has been created from nutfa, from semen, from male and female semen. And yet he stands in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or he stands in the dunya and he denies the resurrection. He denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he cannot see who created him. You know, he cannot see the one who initiated creation. He cannot see the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created once and he can recreate it again. So for Allah uh, uh, initiating the creation of man from semen and despised fluid, creating him from something which is so insignificant, so weak and so despised. So if Allah can do that, then why can Allah not bring him back again? I number 78. And he puts forth for us a parable and forgets his own creation. He says, who will give life to those these bones after they are, are rotten and have become dust? Say he will give life to them. Who created them for the first time? And he is all knower of every creation. He who produces for you fire out of the green tree, then behold, you kindle therewith. Is not he who created the heavens and the earth able to create the like of them? Yes, indeed, he is the all knower the all-knowing the the supreme creator verily his command when he intends a thing is only that he says to it be and it is so this is the power of kun fayakun like we often hear the power of kun when allah wants something to be all he has to do is say kun and it is so imam ahmed recorded that abu dar uh, um, said that the messenger of allah said Allah, may he be exalted, said, O my servants, all of you are sinners apart from those whom I protect. Seek my forgiveness, I will forgive you, and all of you are in need except for those whom I make independent. I am the most generous, majestic, and I do whatever I will. My giving is a word, and my punishment is a word. When I want things to happen, I merely say to it, be, and it is. So Allah just says, Kun. And it is kun faya kun. Ayah number 83. So glorified is he in whose hand is the dominion of all things and to him you shall be returned. So he doesn't just own the universe. He doesn't just own you. He doesn't just own me. He doesn't just own uh, the heaven and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns the whole universe. He owns everything he owns everything he created everything he's going to take everything back so we need to start paying attention to that now we need to start doing things to for the hereafter now so let's quickly summarize what we did so the revelation was sent down by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful why was it sent down it was sent down to warn a people who have not been warned before whose forefathers had not been warned 
therefore they were heedless so if you have not been told if you have not been warned then how are you expect to know something so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the prophets sent the revelation to warn people so anyone that has um, uh, come across the Quran and one that has read the Quran they cannot say that they have not been warned and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives life to the dead so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives life to the uh, dead and they record everything and they send it before them and the traces of what happens so everything that you've done and the consequences of everything that you have done so if you have done something good the consequences of that you know people learned from you people took the the uh, took it further people taught others it was um, you paid for someone's education they became um, uh, in, in self-sufficient independent then they taught, they were able to um, uh, educate their children their generations became um, better off so those actions of yours had consequences so these actions they have consequences and these consequences are also recorded and then we learned about the three um, uh, the three messengers to, that came the messengers came and everybody belied them and why did they belie them they said oh you know you're just like us human beings we don't believe that you are messengers and then this person uh, came running and he said oh you know, why do you not believe them why do you not believe and uh, the, their main reason was that because they were humans just like them and Allah has not revealed anything so they were saying that you're human like us but and Allah hasn't told us anything so they basically had um, had a chip on their shoulder thinking that we should know rather than these people because they're just ordinary and then we learned about evil omens where these people said to them that you are bringing us bad luck or we see an evil omen in them that in Islam there is no such thing as evil omen and they threatened to stone them to death and this we see a pattern of this by the people who disbelieve in uh, uh, in the Quran where they always threaten to stone them to death or we will stone you to death and then of course the man that came running and he said obey the messengers he said why should we not obey the messengers when we have come from Allah we will return to Allah and this short lifespan in between you are not going to um, uh, obey him you are not going to worship him when this person was killed he was taken to paradise he was asked, um, told to enter paradise and he still thought of his people he still thought of the people who were left behind he said oh i wish my people knew how allah had honored me so he wanted to come back and tell the people about how he had been honored and how the people should um, worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so then we learned that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in pairs so man woman night day uh, dunya akhira all everything is um is in a pair we learned that the people who were told to spend out of that which allah has provided us they said that if allah had wanted to provide for these people then don't you think he would have given it to them himself but um in a uh, in a deeper uh, tafsir we were told that allah does can give to whoever he wants allah does give to everybody but he gives people different portions different in the sense to see how the the rich behave whether they will actually give some of what they have to the people who do not have so it is a test for them so it is allah can give them if he wanted to but allah just wants to see what you will do the trumpet will be blown people will come out of their graves and even the people who disbelieved or the people that were um, being punished in their grave the disbelievers or so, no matter what your punishment in the grave was you will be thinking when you see the reality of that day and the severity of that day you will think oh my god who's woken me up from my sleep so that sleep will seem like a nap compared to the day that you will have uh, you, you will face the dwellers of paradise they will be too busy with their wonderful things to worry about the people who are going to the hellfire and on that day their mouths will be sealed and their body parts will give evidence their hands will speak their legs will speak their thighs will speak their eyes then um, everything will speak so they will give evidence as to what they did and whoever Allah gives a long life to then he 
is reversed in creation. So he is born weak and he becomes weak after that as well. So he is um, reversed as to his uh, as to the original him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends a thing, all Allah has to do is say kun and it is be and it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have to do um, uh, 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 when he wants something to happen. All it is is a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word kun and it will happen. So that was the end of our summary. Let's say goodbye to our Facebook and YouTube friends. And have our questions and answers.